What is good guys, we are here with uh, Sigimons vs Bushtush game 2. We see pretty standard teams uh, overall, but then there's a Shaman at the left. So yeah, looking at Sigimons team, that's pretty standard Volturn into Mega Morwile. Um, probably Defensive Rocks land or Solvers Majernum. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then Zemov users, he has, uh, I think, either Zemov Kalyo or Zemov Coco. But like these three months, it could be like there could be a lot of different sets. Like we don't know which one of those three. It's the Zemo user. We don't know which one. Um, like it's the we don't know which one is the scarf out of those two. And looking at Bushtush team, um, I've seen defensive cores with Pex and Steeler a lot, and he has a defensive scissor for Zygat already. So I assume this is offensive land or um, scarf, because otherwise his only other potential scarf is Shaman. I don't think he's scarf Shaman. Uh, Zagat is either Bandit or DD Z-Move on this team, but if it's not Z-Move, he could also be Z-Move Shaman. Uh, this is obviously has to be Defog, he needs some sort of hazard control on this team. And yeah, so we do see a Zygat lead versus a Coco lead. If I'm Bushu, she has switched into either my Sizzle or into my Toxapex. Scouting for Specs, Dazzling Gleam, Slash, Specs, Hidden Power Ice. Mainly Specs, Hidden Power Ice is what you fear here, because I think Dazzling Gleam is a roll, depending on the Zygat set. Mm. So if Sigimons is physical, um, he's gonna go for U-turn here, obviously, and get momentum, because Bush just shouldn't stay in, he doesn't know the Coco set yet, mm -hmm. So there's the um, option for Sigimons to go to Morwell here and threaten us out with an um, electric terrain boosted Thunder Punch, but he goes on a Lari here. If he has hidden Power Fire, that would be a nice move to go for here. Um, like Bush just has the two Steel types here, if he predicts the Silas Dealer, he can go for Trick to cripple that. Uh, Bushtosh actually doesn't go into his steel types, he goes into Landorus. Um This is most likely uh, like Scarf, like I said. Uh, Psychic is, um, you don't usually don't see um, Psychic on Scarf Ladios. So Bushtosh is probably gonna go for U-turn here, knowing that he outspeeds this. Uh, because you see Psychic, um, like you see Psyshock on Scarf Lari. You don't see Psychic on Scarf Lari. But it was still a bit risky where Bushtosh it worked out though. I'm not sure if this is the Z move or is this, if this is some expert belt. Um, but if I'm Bushtosh here, um, I would have probably. I guess he didn't go Celestial Steeler fearing a potential electric terrain boosted Gigavolt Havoc or something like that. I don't, I'm not really sure. But like, he didn't even scout for Hidden Power Fire. Like, Bush uh, Sejima's team overall is quite weak to Scissor. Like, I assume one of these three months has some fire coverage, and it was quite risky where Bush not scouting. Like, I understand that you have to get your Mega off to get like, more Bulk on Scissor and you want your Roost, but like, that was still a bit risky because he wasn't Scarf Lardy, so it could have definitely had a Hidden Power Fire. But yeah, he reveals to be Toxic, so this is obviously Defog, uh, he's gonna go for Defog now. Uh, now see Juma's Landers on a timer, that is amazing for Bush to uh, Bandit Zygarde. He goes hard into Morwile, so he's either bluffing Fire Fang or he has it, but Bush should definitely scout for it. Um, he, like I said, he didn't scout for him Power Fire, that was odd. But uh, if you bring a Morwile hard in on a scissor, that's literally screaming, ooh, I have Fire Fang. Switch out, boy. So yeah, if I'm Bush here, I would probably go into my... Um, my Toxapex or... Hmm. Like the Zygarde is here is a bit risky because Sijumans can break your Zygarde and go for player off. We, like we obviously don't know yet if he has Fire Fang or if he's just bluffing that. But yeah, it's gonna be like hard slash impossible for Sijumans to get up rocks in this game with his Lando being toxic. So there's always Defox on it for free. So he goes Solus Dealer, takes a good chunk from that. Now it would be the time to go into Zygarde here to scout for the Thunder Punch. Like Zygarde, going hard Zygarde here covers the SD and it covers the Thunder Punch. So that's a really good play in my opinion. Um, if he stays in, he's obviously just gonna go for Flamethrower to weaken the Morwell. Flamethrower, I think, to it KOs Morwell. Um, Morwell like, usually runs some like a lot of speed and cannot aff afford to run that much bulk to avoid the 2 hit KO from Flamethrower from Cell Stealer. So he does just go for Thunder Punch. Uh, if he went to Zygarde, he would have looked like a god. Yeah, see Flamethrower 2 hit KOs. There's a little bit more than I thought it would. As, um, a, a little bit less. I thought it would do like until here, the damage. I thought it would do a bit more. So yeah, Bush George is probably now gonna go back to Scissor, anticipating a Thunder, thunder Punch or Player Off or maybe. Maybe into Zygarde again, but Zygarde here is a, a risky play because he might play rough. So I assume he's gonna go Scissor here. If Sejumas really has Fire Fang and he just didn't go for it yet, um, he's playing this like a complete beast. And if he goes for it, he catches. He would catch the Scissor. But uh, um, if he has it, he's, I mean, if you think about it, he's probably not gonna go for it because he's trying to to bluff Bushtush into thinking that he doesn't have it. So if he reveals it here and Bushtush stays in, then he, Bushtush already knows. And then he's not gonna like bring the scissor out again on the mobile. 
But yeah, um, by that logic, it would be a good play for Bushrush to go hard in the scissor because, like I just said, he most likely won't go for five wing here. He doesn't want to reveal it if he has it. And yeah, so anticipate. Um, yeah, Bushrush is gonna go into the scissor. I don't know why he's taking so long. Maybe he's in on his bat. Maybe he has. Um, maybe he's doing some multitasking. So like this, uh, this Zaladi. Well, we know about the Coco Dude turn out turn one. Okay, I was trying to talk about his team, but now he finally makes a play. Um, so now he still he, all he knows is there's a Thunder Bunch and player off. So he still doesn't know if he has Fire Fang. So Bush just should definitely still scout for what he makes the play goes in his Zyga, scouts for Fire Fang. Sijumas does go for Fire Fang. So that was expertly scouted by Bush Tush. Like this was a f like nicely well or like well played by Bush Tush, but earlier he didn't scout for him power five with the scissor. I'm like a bit thrown off by that. But yeah, now you can just go for Bandit Thousand Arrows. Um the Lando's are already poisoned, so it's gonna get weakened, and you can just go back into Scissor afterwards. If the Lando goes for Roxy, you can just defog. Lando gets weakened, um, a Toxic. Um, like Lefty's cancels out the first time of the, the first round of Toxic, but after that, the Toxic is uh, gonna start racking up. So like, um, if I'm CG Masi, I would probably double back into Morwell, expecting the Scissor, or I would, or I would double into Kaleo. But he just goes for rocks. Um, like, that doesn't really do anything, because the Scissor is just gonna defog. And Earthquake would do negative damage to the scissor since it's a bulky mega scissor, like it just lost that Earthquake. The only way like Lando can threaten the scissor is if it has hidden power fire the rest set, or if it has uh, like Sky Strike or SD. Yeah, SD Earthplate can also threaten, but it's obviously defensive lefties, we've already seen that. So it goes on the Kaleo here, and now we'll see, um, like so far from what we've seen, we would think that this is Scarf Kaleo. But we cannot see it guaranteed, like that we know the Lottie isn't Scarf, but we don't know guaranteed that this is Scarf yet. Um, the the Toxabex is gonna come out here from Bush Tush, most likely. So uh, Sijumas is either gonna go for Scald, or if this is a Z move Kaleo, um, he can go for Calm Mind. I mean, you can also double. Oh wait, why did Bush Tush stay in? That was risky. Uh, did he? I think he did. He predict the double in the Coco, predicting the Toxabex. I think Sijumas would have just scalded if the like what that was a risky play on Bush Tush's part, staying in. Yeah, he obviously didn't score, so he shows that he's Calm Mind, so he's most likely Z-Move Keldeo. Uh, Pex comes out here, the taunt is quite obvious, so um, it's, there's some mind game going on. Bush Tush might go into Hard Shaman here, expecting a taunt. Um, so, basically, um, we just found out information about Sijuma's team. We know the Ladi wasn't Scarf, and this isn't Scarf because it showed Calm Mind. The Ladi got outsped by the Lando, so we know it's not Scarf. And his team is quite slow, so I actually think that he's Scarf Coco, he went for U-turn turn 1. I know it's like sounds bad, but I've used it before as well. It's like a it's like a rare scarf. I don't use it often, but it, I think he has to be scarf Coco on his team. Uh, pretty weak to Zygat, uh, not Zygat, Volcarona otherwise, and just in general some nice speed control. So yeah, if Sigmas predicts um, Bush Tush to go on a Shaman here, predicting a taunt, he can go for Secret Sword. It's, it's just a really cool mind game going on here. Like you can't say guaranteed he's gonna make this or this play. It's just like 50-50s in my opinion here. Mm. Like the haze is just so obvious that he might not go for it, and he <laughs> like he, he can scald here, just expecting the taunt, um, which would be uh, overall a, f a fine play. That's actually a play I might make. I would probably go for scald here. He just goes for secret sword. He expected the shaman, I think, and he went for toxic spikes. I'm not the biggest fan of that play. I mean, it worked out. Um, I probably would have gone for haze first though. If, if I expect him to not taunt, I mean toxic spikes are nice. They ship at these two months. Like they're not super nice, but they help him a bit. And now the taunt is obvious again. So um, he breaks the shaman again, and Bushush gets this correct so far. Like I don't know, Bushush is like playing. Uh, like Sejumas is trying to play. Like he's like trying to catch the shaman on switch. He's playing quite aggressive, and now he goes for taunt. But he's like he's like first Bushush stayed and got it correct. But like I, I really like how Sejumas is playing this, like not gonna lie. Like I have trouble putting it into words, but I like how like he, he has to win this game. Um if you guys saw um, the other video, Bush Tush won game one. So Sejumas um playing like fire this game. Finally he says like okay this guy is never going shaman, let me taunt him real quick and yeah now he can calm mind again or he can secret sword. The only thing Bush Tush can do with Toxabex is no fish for a burn. I feel like this is the time, yeah, to just go for secret sword because what can this Toxapex do to you other than Scald? And Scald will do negative damage because you're calm minded up. 
Um, like I said, you only have to fear burn if you look kill you, if you see Jumas here. So if you Secret Sword here, it might do it KO the Shaman, but if you Calm Mind, then it might not Oko the Shaman. So Secret Sorting twice would put Bush to a shitty spot, but he Calm Minds. Um, I understand why he Calm Minds, he thought that he would just um, stay in, but he did not do that. And yeah, now this um, Shaman has one out base stats across the board, so I assume it can take a hit. Um, unless this is all out pummeling, but I assume it's just a Hydro Vortex, that's the most common set, the Hydro Pump. Yeah, Shaman can take that. Uh, Shaman the Alice, the, Al the Alice pulls out a uh, Bloom Doom, that was a Z Seed Flare I assume, and Kelly is able to take that because of the plus 3 speed death from the Call Mind. And yeah, if I'm a uh, here, um, I don't think you lose much from just Secret Sorting again, I think you can save a Z move for later. Like, it's not like Bushdash has a good switch in, but he goes for a Z move, okay. So just sex of uh, the Shaman there. Uh, Scarf Lando can go for you down here. It uh, would pick up the Kelly from 9%, and if you must be just um, Bushdush gets momentum. So, Sijumas is most likely. Like, you can either go in with own Lando, or you can go in with Majorna here, and he pricked in the U turn. <laughs> but, let's think. I mean, if he goes into these two months, then uh, technically Bushdush can go into uh, South and get more lefties, protect, get more lefties, or like throw off a leech, cheating get more lefties if it comes in with the landers. But I think for Bushdush, it's overall more important, or like he's gonna prioritize keeping. <coughs> he's gonna prioritize keeping rocks off, I guess. But yeah, that's actually smart from Sijimas going to this because um, if you get the rocks up, then um, and Bushdush defox, then the T spike is gone, and his Coco and his Kelly don't have to worry about that. Even though the Kelly is almost the Kelly is almost dead already anyway, so I think the Kelly might just come out later as a the Kelly might come out later as a fodder, but um, having the Coco health is obviously really nice for a CG Um So I do expect like he has a few options. He can go on a Bandit Zygot here. Um, since he since he comes in on the land, or he's not going to be intimidated, and Thousand Arrows is going to do a lot. And yeah, the other option would be going Celestia to get more lefties and go for Leech Seed. Or just going to Scizor. Like, those are his three options. Um, Zygarde is at full if I recall correctly. It's, and HPI is, does around half, something like that. Um, but ha I think health on Zygarde is quite nice though. I mean, the only thing you need health on Zygarde for, if the Coco is really physical, that means it has U-turn, Wild Charge, Brave Bird, and what would the last move be? Not sure. Uh, sadly, the Coco doesn't get player of it. Oh, he's timing out. Don't time out, my man. Uh, yeah, he doesn't really need health on Zygarde because I think Majorna outgoes it anyway. With Ice Beam and you can kill Majorna if you get prior damage on that with the T-Arrows. On Lari you're not gonna stay in. More player of kills you anyway, but you're gonna occur it before. Like health doesn't matter. The only thing that health matters for is maybe Hydro Pump range from Kelio. So yes, um obviously just gonna go for thousand arrows because if he goes for outrage he would be locked in and he could uh, easily get revenge by one of the two fairies, so he's not gonna do that. Uh, people are going wild in the background. I hope you guys can't hear that too too much. It's really irritating. It's hard to concentrate when people are in the back. Um so Sijima has, has the option to go for him poise and get good damage on Zygarde, or you can go for rocks. Um, I think rocks is a good play because this land was already weakened and setting up rocks puts it like makes it so that it only has like one or two more rock switch ins, which would be really nice. But yeah, Bushdoor is already just gonna click thousand arrows here to weaken the land. We already talked about that he doesn't want to be locked into outrage. Just 43, that gets a good roll. Doesn't really matter though, to this chaos anyway. And yeah, him part is around half. And Sijumas can keep this around potentially to get up rocks later and can sack his Kelio here. Or, like, he can either sack this or the Kelio. Um, to be quite honest, Kelio, Kelio is probably the better sack because Kelio is at like 9% and the Toxapex is still pretty healthy. So, like, Kelio is not gonna be breaking through Booster's team anytime soon. It's in bullet punch range, it doesn't break the pack, so like, yes, the second Kelly was a fine play. Lander still outspeeds uh, the Cell Stealer and can get up rocks on that. And now, 
can go on as Lottie here. Because I don't think he wants his Coco to get poisoned. And yeah, if the Lottie comes out, Bush Dush is probably gonna go Scizor. And unless Sijima's bluffed him power for like a god and earlier and like didn't go for it and then revealed it later on. Uh, Bush Dush um, Scizor walls the Lottie, that would mean that Sijumas would have to double into like more while breaking the Scizor. Yeah, I would go Lottie here and then double into more while breaking the Scizor. Mm -hmm. Because like you probably should fire thing more while. So um, the chances that he also has hidden power fire on Lottie are like pretty low and like also he didn't go for it earlier. And since he already has a fire move on Mawa, like I don't think he would be I don't think he would have overlapping coverage like that. But he has a Vortex Mawa. That set is cool. Uh Thunder Punch, Fire Fang play rather than Sucker Punch. Uh, Sejima is taking his time, which is understandable. He's in the back, he has to win this game. So if he goes Ladi and then doubles no more while on the Scizor, uh, I think Bush is then forced to sack his Celesteela because he doesn't have good switches to Morwell. Going to Zagat and Morwell is way too risky. So that's the Ladi and show me your double switch in the Morwell. Show me the double switch, Bob. <laughs> But yeah, even if there's, if, even if they're taking their time, um, you guys still have the smoke to chat to read. Even though sometimes the smoke to chat is like <laughs> a bit cringy, but sometimes it's also funny. I uh, actually don't talk in smoke to chat that often. Let me know if you are like one of the guys that that talk a lot in smoke to chat. Um, but yeah, I, I assume a lot of people that talk in smoke to chat are sub to me. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, he just, oh, he didn't double to Mawa, he just, okay, Bush just sacked the Steeler. Not sure why Bush just didn't go Scizor, I'm quite surprised from the series of plays. Yeah, he's gonna go for Scarf U-turn here, uh, either pick off the Lari or get momentum, but I'm quite surprised there that Bush just sacked his Sala Steeler. If I time out, it's because of my family being a bunch of blacks they are, okay. I'm, I'm like quite thrown off, like, at this point, when he already shot Fire Fang on this and he didn't go for Hidden Power Fire earlier with this, I don't think he had Hidden Power Fire, so like, Scissor was quite free there. Not sure why he went Celestila. Because Celestila, huh. He was just sacking it to get this land on for free, like, I get it, but like, he could have gone Scissor and kept it as fodder. But yeah, now he's 100% just gonna U turn out. Uh, Sijumas, okay, he's gonna sack his Landris, it should die, dude. Yeah, from 5% even to like a weak U turn. So uh, Sijumas gets the switch advantage here. He gets to bring in his uh, Mawal now. I'm really surprised that Sijumas didn't double into Mawal number one and number two. I'm really surprised that Bush just was sacking his status dealer instead of keeping it as fodder. Like I said, like that's what that was odd. Am I missing something? <laughs> but that's the Mawal and. Probably Bush is gonna go on a Toxapex here. Um, scissor walls pretty much Sijum the, the rest of Sijuma's team, so there's no point in staying in with the Scissor here and risking it. So if you see Jumas, um you probably go for Thunder Punch breaking Toxapex. He just plays it safe. I mean, I understand it. He gets the burn, that's quite lucky. So that cancels out the Black Sludge. Um, I don't think it's gonna come into... Like, I don't think it's gonna be a game-changing um, Hex there, though. The fire... That is so much, so this Pax is quite spadef. If he gets the burn, it would suck for Sijumas, he doesn't get the burn. So, player of kills from here, player of is pretty free because it also hits the. It also covers the pivot into the switch into Zygarde if Bush just tries to make that play, but he's obviously just gonna sack. Okay, Fire Fangs and tries. In case Bush just tries to go into Scissor, and Fire Fang. Actually, like he knew already that Fire Fang kills because earlier did 15, so it's obviously gonna do 12. And yeah, so now. He's gonna go scissor and bullet punch here, and I think this is quite tough for Sijumas. Unless he has hidden power fire on the Majorna, how does he beat Scizor? 
I guess he has him power fire on one of these two, otherwise he's just gonna lose to this. I mean he has to have. Um says all solos otherwise, right? He just clicks bullet punch, mobile dies. Um the only reason you keep would you to keep the mobile around at this point is um it can sucker punch the the landris. And I think that's it. Can it do anything else? He goes to so Majana. So this is screaming that he has hidden power fire. I mean, it makes sense. His team is like pretty weak to Sizzle. Like even though he has fire wing and mobile, he's still quite weak to Sizzle. So really good play there from Bush to um, going to Zygarde on the hidden power fire. So like you guys can see, like he's scouting for the hidden power fire and he scouted for the fire wing on the Majana. He scouted for the hidden power fire on the Majana. He scouted for the fire wing on the mobile, but he didn't scout for hidden power fire on the Ladi earlier. Like I'm super surprised here. So yeah, a thousand arrows there was free. He got a guaranteed kill. And uh, Nosjumas is gonna go Ladi here. Now probably click Psychic or Draco. Mm. But this was definitely an interesting game. And we do now know that the um, Majuna has hidden power fire. So uh, the game is not over yet. Mm. Yeah, this is a free scissor. So there was a fire. Oh god. So yeah, I'm gonna, I didn't um, like talk about the potential double into Majuna here that covers the scissor. So if Bushler stayed in and predicted that the game would have ended right there. But Sijuma is the god, um, he's trying to come back, he lost the first game, he's like, nah, let me win this real quick. Predicts the Zayat goes for Flashcan, sadly doesn't kill. Um, I guess Flashcan was a mid ground because it hits Zalandro and Zygarde. Um, I don't know if he doesn't have Ice Beam, because if he had Ice Beam, that would have covered both. Like, he was obviously predicting the Scissor to not stay in, because he went for Flashcan. So I assume he doesn't have, I assume he doesn't have Ice Beam. And yeah, he was forced to sack here, now he's gonna go into Coco and U-turn. Um, Zygarde is still quite nice to keep, like it gets a kill every time it comes in on Majorna. So he might go on a Landris here. Wait. Is it? It's not revealed AV Majorna yet, right? But it should be AV looking at the team. So he goes for Scarf in Power Ice. I assume there's a Scarf Coco. Just from, I've talked about it earlier, all his other ones were not Scarfed. And his team needs some speed control. So yeah, he's forced hard into Majorna here. I don't know if I would have sacked the... I don't know if I would have sacked the um, Zygarde. I feel like it was... Um, I feel like Bushter should have just gone to Scissor there. Like the only way going Scissor there would have been bad for Bushter's if was if this Coco was hidden power fire. But the chances of that, of that were quite low when he already showed hidden power fire Majorna and fire thing a uh, more while. Like, like, I know you're a bit weak to scissor, but like, he's not gonna have, like, he's not gonna have another fire move. Like, that was weird. Like, why? Why did he do that? He breaked the Mawal. He breaked the Mawal, okay. Uh, the Majorna. My bad, guys, the Majorna. But like, he, this is locked into Hidden Power Eyes. So like, I, uh, huh? Wait, is the Majorna in 2 KO range? It was so weird these last turns. I think Bush just kind of choked the last few turns. Like he could have saved. He could have saved his Zygarde. He could have saved his Zygarde, and it would have gotten a kill uh, whenever it came in on the Majorna. And he could have saved his Lando sack for that. And now he loses to Hidden Power Majorna, I think. Uh. I mean, I, un I understand kind of why he pulled that double and into Landorus, but I don't understand why he sacked the Zygarde. Yeah, these last two turns are weird. Why did he switch Lando in that Coco anyway? Let me let me think. Let me think. Let me think. So if he, I mean, he obviously predicted the Majorna. That's why he doubled. This is why you use U-turn scissor. Yeah, exactly. If he had U-turn scissor, he could have avoided those. Um, I mean, he obviously put double into Lando, anticipating the Majorna. But if he if he just kept the Zagat around, I think he won anyway. Like what? Am I missing something? I don't think I'm missing something. And what else? Yeah, bullet punch does twenty two only twenty six. So like, yeah, if he bullet punched and Sijumas goes hard Majorna, then it wouldn't have 3 hit KO'd because it does like, um, 
I mean, it would have been a roll to 3 hit KO, but as you see here, 22 26, then it wouldn't have 3 hit KO with this roll. So, I do understand why he made the double, but if he just kept Zygarde, I think he won. And yeah, if I'm missing anything here and you, you guys know, then explain it to me in the comments. But if he just kept Zygarde, he won, right? Like what? But yeah, Sejuma uh, is able to pull out uh, the win in game 2. Uh, really cool game. And I'll be back later with game 3. My voice is actually kind of dead, but I'm gonna make sure that. Um, when my was like I'm gonna wait a few minutes and then we're gonna re-narrate that. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Smash that like button if you are a fan of these live tournament games. And yeah, you can expect a lot more content and peace out. Bop.